So you want to create a literary renaissance. You want to bring great literature back into the world. You want to banish Rupi Carr, Ocean Vung, and all the other terrible authors that are inundating bookshelves and bookstores all across the world. But what do you do? And today I am broadcasting live from the Dirty T downtown Tucson with the 12 apostles with Jesus over there. And I'm going to show you guys the way. And my name is Ian and here on Right Conscious, we talk about the greatest authors and books of all time. But more importantly, I show authors like you how to activate, how to share, how to spread your beautiful writing to the world. But this is bigger than you because a literary renaissance is going to require 50,000 authors who aren't just good craftsmen, but are also willing to market their work by any means necessary, everybody. I'm talking about guerrilla marketing, whatever it takes, because right now we are being outmarketed by a bunch of book talk emo teenagers. That's what's happening. Do you know who controls the book industry right now? Do you know who makes content and cares and shares their work out to the world? It's a bunch of depressed kids. They're beating us. We are overthinking. We are caught in analysis paralysis. It is a joke. We are an embarrassment. We have not only lost the war, it is like Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson being knocked out by an eight-year-old. That's what's happened to us. And instead of getting back up and getting in the rig, we are kissing the feet of the eight-year-old. We are cow cowering, cowering, excuse me, in the corner. And so let's get to step number one, which is leave the stunted geniuses behind. Everybody thinks they're the exception. Everybody thinks that they don't have to participate in the movement. They think, I don't want to market my work. I'm going to try traditional publishing. I'm going to see what happens. I don't like marketing. That's not what art's about. All those people, fuck them all. Throw them out. We don't need them. I'm, we don't need to give them any support. I don't care how good their work is. We all need to do our part. And part of doing, doing our part is identifying our role in the movement because there will be only a few of you guys who are the best, who reach the heights of a Cormac McCarthy or a Toni Morrison or whoever your favorite author is. That is not guaranteed, but that doesn't mean that you, first of all, can't write something that can transform thousands, if not tens of thousands of people's lives, but you can also help uplift other authors and build the infrastructure of this movement because I don't know if this is going to happen in our lifetime. But the last thing that we need is a bunch of Reddit dorks. I don't want to do that. This isn't gonna work. The Logic Bros gotta go. They have ruined everything really in modern society and their questions are endless. Their blockages are endless. I don't care if we exist in an echo chamber because that's what it's going to take. We're going to have to hit a level where we are comfortable calling those people losers and not letting them anywhere near our work and what we are trying to create. And this is in your personal life, in your personal branding and promotion of your work and in your career as an artist. You don't want people in, the, in people like that in your life. And so we have have to identify those geniuses and not include them even if they are really good because we have lost the battle people don't give a fuck about writing and with AI and with video games getting better and social media the education system collapsing society collapsing we all need to be doing whatever we can to activate and we're the only group of artists who haven't done this yet. If you look at rappers, they come to a place like this and shoot a music video. Then they take photos. Then they promote it. Then they hand out their stuff at a live event. Writers, you know, I get comments all the time when I say this. They're like, that's why writers are different. We realize that this is a trap. Well, it is a trap. Technology sucks. I know, but what are we going to do about it? We can't be Luddites. We can't be aggregates. Aggregates. Yeah, it doesn't work. It's never worked before, and it's never going to work in the future. We're not going to be the first group to pull it off. A bunch of introverted writers? Are you fucking kidding me? Pull it together. You are not an exception. That's why I made this video outside. It is 106 degrees right now in Tucson. I am sweating bullets like a doctor. But I know if I was inside, it wouldn't have that same effect. You wouldn't hear the cicadas in the highway and the bums that are literally looking at me right now. Maybe I'll give a, give a little B-roll in a second. So we'll talk about 
guerrilla marketing and finding your place in the movement more in a second. But step number two is that you need to spend more time on your books, especially if they are novels. If you are a poet, you can get away with only spending maybe a thousand hours on a book. But if you are going to make someone read a novel, you, do you know what that's asking? You're saying to someone, you need to spend five to eight hours of your life and use a ton of brain power to read my story. And you should read my story instead of all the other great books and novelists that have, exi have existed in the past. And the reason no one cares about reading is because they have been burned countless, countless times by new authors because we, people do want to read new authors. I read new authors all the time hoping to find something great. And sometimes I do. I want to know someone and follow someone who is alive. You're really alive. Yes who is active in the world, maybe who I can go see read and sign my book, that would be great. But because of MFAs, because of capitalism, we think that we need to be successful fast. You want to get that book done, be famous overnight, to say you have a book done. It sucks to tell your family how long you, that you're a writer and you've been working on a book for eight years. I know, trust me, that's been me for the last 15 years of my life. But every great novel, with a couple exceptions, has at least six to 7,000 hours put into it, sometimes even more. Listen to that. How much time have you put into your book? Have you done six to 7,000 hours yet? And even worse, a lot of those authors that wrote well and put the 6,000 hours in were from rich families who they went to private schools. They are, they are talented individuals with a great background anyway. And so we have to make up all that lost time. How much lost time? Wait, explain the book. Thank you and trauma did we acquire in the public school system? Answer that for yourself. I know it's a lot. It's easily over 10,000 hours. And so it's, we're not, we're 16, 20,000 hours in debt to where other authors were at. And once again, we have to beat them or at least get to their level. But that's not the end. So for the next six years, you don't just get to work on your novel and do nothing. And so once again, step number two is to spend more time writing these novels because every five years when you do a book launch, everyone should be excited. People should read it. The worst thing that an author can do is launch a book to nobody. Like if you have a book done right now and you can't guarantee that 500 people are going to buy it, then why the hell would you release it? Why wouldn't you work on getting people excited before releasing your novel? Do you think that the Amazon algorithm gods are going to take your book up and spread it to the masses? Absolutely not. And so during that time, you need to release free stuff because free writing or videos or Instagram posts, whatever, creates goodwill. You need to be of service to the community and you don't need to make content about your book, about your poetry. You can talk about any author, any topic, anything, but give value back to the literature and writing community because we need more of that. We need more personalities. We need different type of people from different countries who speak different languages in this fight. The 50,000 people don't need to be a bunch of white people who only speak English. It can be anything. Because eventually, if you are a dope Japanese author, your work will get translated to English and all of us will freak out over what you wrote. The best way to get people to care about your stuff is to first of all, release stuff for free. It could be a blog post, it could be anything. And once people start to care about you, they will want to buy your work. This is what happens with celebrities. Gabby Hanna, Lana Del Rey, Gene Iko, whoever can release a poetry book that's a bunch of shit and sell tens of thousands, if not more copies automatically because they have a personal brand. And so if you have a small personal brand and it's magnified by great writing that's actually sick, that's going to spread faster than you could ever imagine imagine. So you need to get in the habit of being productive, of releasing free stuff that isn't the best. That's maybe only 70%, if not less, of the quality that you can write because you're giving away for free and people are going to appreciate that. And the flagship stuff, the stuff that's pinned at the top of your sub stack or that you send out to people on your email list in like an automated sequence when they join it, that could be your good stuff. That could be stuff that you've revised and gets people, you know, and, and it shows people like, oh damn, this guy's good. But there are people right now, including yourself, who are watching this video. You, the audio isn't the best. Maybe the lighting, maybe the presentation. I'm literally dying because of the heat. But you care about me. You care about the message. So you are still here. This isn't 100%. I could edit this script, this, do this, all this other stuff with my channel. But none of you guys care because you are here for the movement. And by giving away free things, you get to, you get to know your audience. You get to meet people. 
The best thing that ever happened to me was that I made 300 videos at the start of this channel and I only got 100 subscribers. But I talked and became friends with like 20 of those subscribers and learned all about writers and what they are struggling with and what they think is happening in the world, excuse me, in the publishing world and what they want. And now suddenly I can be a voice of those people because I spent time talking to them. And that's, and that's why creating connections is important before you blow up or attain success because then you'll just be this disconnected shell because now even at the level I'm at with only 17,000 subscribers, I have people who present themselves as my who, as a friend all the time and maybe we start talking, yada, 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 but then they out of nowhere in a very kind of weird way sneak their novel in. They're saying, like, what's your address? I want to send you my novel so you can edit it. And it's like, oh shit, you weren't trying to be my friend. And so at the start, by giving away free stuff, by having a humble beginning, you can learn a lot about yourself, get productive, get into a nice flow, and then also get to know other people. And there is really no strings attached. It's also good that, what if you blew up? What if you wrote a short story or something and it blew up? but you weren't very productive, you weren't in a routine. If you get into a good writing routine or, or a marketing routine or whatever it takes, then when that day does come, when you do blow up, it's going to be a big, excuse me, you're going to be able to follow up with that with more, con that's what happened with this channel. I made a video on Cormac McCarthy that blew up and I immediately, because I was making a five or six videos a week, just followed up with more. I was like, oh shit, they wanna hear about Cormac? I could talk about Cormac. And I went from having 100 subscribers to 10,000 subscribers in, you know, the course of seven or eight months. So step number four is you need to be ready to talk about your work and market by any means necessary. I'm talking about not caring what people think, getting over whatever limits, whatever blocks, and getting out there. There are people walking around and watching me, listening to me right now, and it doesn't feel good. It feels embarrassing. I don't want to be the influencer out here in the wild being like, yada, 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 I'm in the Garden of Jessamine or whatever the fuck this place is called. I hate social media. I didn't have social media until I was in my late 20s other than having like a Facebook and MySpace profile when I was in high school. I don't, I don't like it. I most of the time automate posts, like you can automate and schedule posts on Instagram so I don't have to log on there and see all the craziness. None of this is fun for me. I would rather be writing everyone. I would rather, I was sitting there pursuing my writing dreams. I have all this information I know now. I could have applied all that and become a writer and live successfully, but when one suffers, we all suffer. How can you see where we've come as a community and think it's okay to be a fun fucking selfish person. You can't think that that's okay. You have a role to play. And if you want to abandon it, then you are the problem, no matter how good your writing is. And so you're going to have to get over whatever insecurity, whatever problem, your family's going to see it, people at your job are going to see it, they're gonna think you're weird. So what? People are going to talk shit. They're going to, people are going to leave comments that are so true, it's scary. That sometimes happens to me. I'm like, dude, you are totally right, but you are such a jerk. <laughs> And it will happen every day. I get comments every single day that just, you know, feel like a punch to the head, but it's just like, whatever, I'm gonna move on and look at the positive comments. Shit gets big enough, some of some people are gonna have to go to prison. That's what happens in every movement. The FBI, the CIA, whoever, there's gonna be infiltration. The publishing houses, the, pub, the book mafia are gonna come in and start taking us out. Like this, you know, if we're actually successful, that's what happens to movements. People will get canceled, it's endless. But are, are you ready? Do you care? And if not, why read? You're not gonna figure anything out about life, everybody. If you're not trying to help other people and awaken other people's consciousnesses, it doesn't matter what Kant said. It doesn't matter how Spinoza and Kant interact and how they influence Heidegger. It doesn't matter. Go live your life if you're not going to play in this game with us. Or a war, a game, whatever we wanna call it. If you're not down, then what's the point? Go make money, go be unconscious. It's way more fun. And the reality is, is that a lot of people write, a lot of people read because they want to be the cool guy in the room. They want to be the know-it-all, they want to know more, they always want to have an advantage and that's how they see it. And those people need to be expelled also. Last but not least, we need to take the Harold Bloom mindset. We need to uplift others because you can always be doing something. Maybe you're in a bad spot right now. Maybe you're in a bad relationship, a bad job, you don't have the energy, but you could not just uplift people like me, you could uplift other authors, you could support them, you could ask what you could do, you could create a blog, 
like you could create an Instagram compilation page where you put together the best poems that you know and use that to elevate other people. That doesn't take very much energy. If you can't do that, you can leave comments. You can do a lot of, of different things that are actually important, but you have to have the axiomatic mindset of positivity and upliftment. Deconstruction, postmodernism, Reddit, the internet, the logic bros have done an absolute number on us, and a lot of people are violently negative. Sometimes I talk about Rupi Car and these people, and I'm going to have to stop. I'm, that's something I'm actually working on. I want to focus on the good people. Who cares about the bad? I need to give all my energy to the good. And I know that's a very new agey thing that actually has a lot of logical fallacies on that. And I don't think we should apply that mindset to society, obviously, because that, you know, that's terrible if you do that. I know a lot of spiritual people who do. But for this movement, for this echo chamber, we have to create because we have so much working against us. That's what we're going to have to do because it's bigger than just sending a novel to someone. Because let's say you really like someone. Let's say you read David Foster Wallace or this new author and you say to all your friends, hey, you should read this novel. You guys already know. None of them are going to read it. Maybe one person is going to. That's not enough. It's got to be smaller than that. I'm sorry that we have to dumb ourselves down, but we have to build people up to reading novels, to trusting us, to listening to us. And that requires human connection. That requires you to get out of the fucking room that you may be in and out into the world and make friends and get to know people. That's why I continue to be a teacher. I can make more than $45,000 a year, everybody. I've had other jobs that I have, but I realized that, okay, if I'm going to walk the walk, then I need to be on the ground. I need to be talking to the next generation, seeing what they like, seeing what they are doing. And that will help me elevate my game to the next level. And now I realize how to interact, what content I need to make, how to bring a 16 year old who hates reading to wanting to read classic literature. I see the vision and you can see that vision in your own life too, even just with your own minute friend group through experimentation and a bunch of other stuff. And obviously some people will never come. Some people are sheep and just will never be converted until the last minute to wanting a, to have a growth oriented mindset. But there are millions of people, tens of millions of people in America that are sleeper cells, Manchurian candidates that we can activate, that will care, that will support us. Oh, I want you guys to tell me, what am I missing? What do we need to do? The goal is to have a golden age of literature, to have, much like cloud rap is happening, uh, excuse me, having, look at the rap industry, look at some of these other industries that have gone fully independent and are now supporting, I, I mean, I, thousands, if not tens of thousands of artists and producers and managers and all these other people, they've created their own independent economy. We haven't. Our independent economy is a bunch of gag genre writers on Kindle that are shoving a bunch of shit down people's throats. Our golden age right now is book talk. We can do better. You can do better. We are smart. I know we can beat the 15 year olds. I know we can beat the e girls and all those girls and all the men and women, whoever that read fantasy, that read A Court of Thorn and Roses. I know we can beat them. My God. I know 95% of people who are listening to this are men. And I know that there is a 5%, excuse me, there are 5% that are women. I'm sorry that he's getting to me. And they talked about Moby Dick. If they talked about Blood Meridian, like how the book talk influencer girls talk about their books, it would blow up. I mean, I couldn't even imagine the success that that would have. I would become obsolete overnight. And that's what we want. We want people like me, the first generation of this new literary renaissance to just be phased out. And so that is our goal. That is what we are doing. Let me know what you guys are doing down below and I will see you guys very soon.